right, guys, that was it. That's the last 10 rounds, bringing this gun count to 11,500 rounds in just about six months. So this is Project One Gun. Thanks for tuning in. Jay Helmsing here. Uh, today we're gonna do a real quick wrap up. So I just wanted to get those last shots here uh, on the screen for you guys, just to kind of tell you guys uh, my experience with this gun, uh, where this is going, what I plan on doing with the gun, and my overall findings with this project. So as you guys know, Project One Gun was started basically just to see if I could do everything with one gun. Uh, as far as competition, defensive use, um, everything like that in between training, all that kind of stuff. Uh, basically, the findings were that uh, you're probably better off having a dedicated range gun, maybe similar to what you carry, uh, just because obviously bringing this thing out here to the range, using it a lot, it's gonna get filthy dirty, it's gonna get hot, it's gonna get a lot of miles on it. And uh, because of that, you probably don't wanna be carrying it around all the time, especially to and from the range and things like that if you carry all the time like I do. Uh, with that said, that out of the way, um, I'm really pretty surprised and pretty shocked. Now, most of the Glocks I've had have, have been reliable. Um, but you know, this, uh, this Gen 5, I just, I really can't say enough about it. So again, 11,500 rounds, and I'm gonna recap all the failures I had with it. I had three ammunition related failures, and that's it. And those were from reloaded rounds that I did uh, with the tighter chamber, the, they just didn't like it. Uh, so there's kind of an out of, out of battery failure, things like that, failure to go into battery. Uh, it's from the ammunition, so really nothing I could fault the gun with. It's not even like the gun was really dirty or anything like that. Uh, just, you know, I didn't drop test them. I should have drop tested them and I didn't and, uh, you know, paid the price and I was out of competition. So um, other than that, I can't complain. And I really don't know too many other guns that I would expect that type of reliability out of. So uh, if nothing else, following Project One Gun, hopefully you guys have uh, been through this with me and seen uh, the type of wear and tear that I've put on this gun and the way that it's kind of responded to that. So uh, pretty stellar, pretty amazing. I know a lot of people complained about the Gen 5 because there weren't a whole lot of changes made to it, at least changes that we could see. Uh, but apparently Glock kind of knew what they were doing and they changed things internally to make it a little more durable, as crazy as that sounds, because Glocks being as simple as they are, being one of the most uh, you know, reliable handguns out there as far as, uh, you know, uh, if you ask really anybody, not just the marketing, but if you ask anybody that's been around them, used them, seen them in, uh, in training and things like that, they typically don't go down at the rate of other guns. So um, that's really my biggest finding with this. Uh, and again, I would recommend you all at least have maybe two guns, uh, you know, one for being, uh, you know, protective guns, something you're going to carry, something you're going to use on your bedside, uh, and then one just to go train with, just because you're going to have those instances where uh, you don't want to be putting that type of mileage and that type of rounds on the gun, and uh, you know you never know what could happen. You really want your your carry gun to be in really the the, the optimal state of readiness at all times. So, uh, just my findings with that. Uh, now, did it simplify my life? Um, the answer is. To some extent, it did because uh, you know obviously I have less to worry about. I have less uh, guns to prep, um, but then again, uh, you know, I was spending a little bit more time cleaning this gun and getting it ready for carry and things like that that I wouldn't normally have to do. Uh, so you know, simplifying your life and maybe picking one or two of those guns you want to really stick with is probably the way to go, as, as opposed to carrying an entire bag of guns out to the range like I have sometimes been known to do, and. Um, you know, go on that route where you have all kinds of dirty guns and you have all kinds of magazines to keep track of and you have all kinds of different parts and things you might need for repairs and things like that. So uh, just some, some findings on that front. Um, but I did want you guys to come out here with me and see the kind of wrap up with this. Uh, it is 2019 now, so I will be kind of moving on. And as far as what's going to happen with this gun, so let's tear it down real quick. Uh, hopefully I can, you know, get enough light in here to show you guys the type of wear and tear that you're gonna see uh, <clears throat> on this gun with the type of rounds that I have through it. And uh, we'll take a look first at the slide. So just to show you guys, really, that's a really, really durable coating, really durable finish, no holster wear, uh, really anything. And we're starting to get a little bit here, it looks like, uh, just on that corner. But as you guys know, with that type of usage on uh, most of your Gen 4s and things like that, you'd, you'd have a, a pretty scuffed up slide by now. So um, really dur durable coating. Sights have held up well. Ameriglo bold sights. I've not had an uh, issue with them moving, sliding, anything like that, or the tritium you know, burning out of them or anything crazy. Uh, I have had some tritium lamps on other sites go dead, but not on these. Um, and you would just look at the internals here. So there's my recoil spring. That's gonna get changed out as soon as I get home today with a brand new one. Uh, might just be, you know, you can see it's 
it's fairly easy to move, but I've not had any issues with it. Uh, people recommend replacing those like 5,000, 7,000, 3,000 rounds. So I've got, you know, 11,500 now. Uh, definitely past its, its usage uh, there as far as uh, most people are concerned. So I will we'll be replacing that, but it's not caused any malfunctions or anything yet. The barrel has that burnishing on it that you notice uh, right away when when firing these Gen 5s, you kind of see that those rings, those kiss marks, if you will, uh, from it working in the slide. But really, uh, again, nothing too crazy going on there. So uh, nothing that is uh, really cropped up other than that, just kind of wear, no, no, uh, you know, marks or or a really, uh, you know, anything coming out in the barrel itself as far as the polishing or anything. Just kind of that that uh, movement of the barrel itself being a little bit tighter. Uh, we got the slide here. As you guys can see, most of those wear, wear areas are now, uh, you know, pretty polished up. Uh, but again, everything is free. It is kind of grimy and dirty in there, but everything is free and moves very freely. And then we'll show you guys the lower receiver, which is gunked up right now. But most of those wear parts are, uh, you know, nice and polished up just from shooting at this point. So it's not ever been, uh, you know, torn apart, detailed, cleaned, anything crazy like that. But um, Again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following this. I uh, hope to bring some more projects like, like this to you soon. And I will get Project One Gun refreshed and back in the lineup, and we'll find something else cool to do with it. But uh, thanks again for tuning in, guys. As always, continue to go out, go, go out to the range, watch these videos, practice, train, and just continue to get better and uh, learn and develop more as a shooter because that's what it's all about. I will see you guys next time. Until then, thanks for tuning in.